Hi guys, this is Scribbly again with another pen review and today we are going to have a look at the Pilot Capless as it is called in Europe or Pilot Vanishing Point as it is called in North America for instance. Why does it have that name or why does it carry that name? Well, because the pen does not have a cap. It looks like a ballpoint, has a retractable point and when you retract the point it sort of vanishes. That is maybe why it's called Vanishing Point or Capless. We'll cover that a little bit more in depth in a minute. First of all, let's have a look at that packaging. It's a quite futuristic pen I find. So this packaging here matches that futuristic appearance, sort of a matte black carton wrapper here with glossy Pilot logos scattered all over it. Once you slide that out, you get sort of a spaceship or back to the future style looking plastic box saying capless pilot um, it's glossy black and transparent you open it up like that the pen will then hoover in here that looks really spacey really futuristic i like the way they've made that then there was a small label here around the clip saying pilot capless medium i got the pen here in a medium nib uh, then you can take that thing here out. Then you have this pen, satiny pen bed down here that opens up like that. And then you get a uh, pen comes with a converter and an ink cartridge and a small metal cap, which in the beginning I didn't exactly know what it is for. Um, it's for sliding in the ink cartridge because when the ink cartridge sits in the pen like that and you push the button, um, there's a mechanism in here that um, pushes towards that ink cartridges and uh, ink cartridge and will push that down forth and back with the nib unit that I'm going to show and expose in a minute. And so this metal cap is essentially to protect the ink cartridge from being worn down by that mechanism that's going to push against it uh, over and over again. So it's just to protect that ink cartridge as said from being worn down. And then, uh, you get a small brochure with a number of filling instructions and whatsoever. And then a small pilot card, put all that back in here and let's have a look at the pen itself. As said, looks very interesting. That finish that I have here is a matte black blue. I think it's called Midnight Blue. It's a very lovely matte satiny dark blue finish. Then it has a glossy center band here or two center bands, which is like where you can unscrew the pen. We'll do that in a minute. That is glossy black. Um, then the, that mechanism that will extend and retract the tip, that works very nice. Very satisfying click. That is matte black. The clip is matte black as well, and the front part also is matte black. Very peculiar pen shape, very unique design, nothing that you will have seen from any other fountain pen before, I guess. Let's do some size comparisons because there's a special feature to the pen that I like a lot. If we compare the pen to a Lamy Safari, and the Lamy Safari is a rather long pen, you will see that it is pretty much exactly the same length than a Lamy Safari. And if we compare it to a Pelican M400, you will see that in total, it's a pen that is quite a lot longer than the Pelican M400. Now, if you want to put a Lamy Safari in your shirt pocket, the pen will normally stick out like that because shirt pockets often are not that deep. The Pelican M400 is a pen that I find is a perfect carry, uh, everyday carry or shirt pocket pen because um, most shirt pockets actually have kind just kind of that depth that lets a Pelican M400 sit in there perfectly. And the nice thing about the way the clip is attached to that capless here is if I compare that, that is how the pen or where the pen will sit in the shirt pocket. You see that it's pretty much exactly the same length than a Pelican M400. So that pen will make an excellent shirt pocket pen which is super practical because you can operate it with one hand it's a very awesome nice fast note taker anyway and very convenient to carry in the shirt pocket which makes that a perfect choice for everyday carry in my opinion okay now that mechanism here you see that here in front the 
tip or the nib extends here like this and there is a small little mechanism in here that sort of comes down and goes up again. I know if the camera, yeah, and now you can see it. So you see when the tip retracts, that thing comes back up. So that will prevent the nib from drying out, getting dirty or whatsoever. Really nice. See the feet down here is pilot feet. Um, has a black nib as well. That is now with a breather hole on it, the medium nib. Um, I think it's only certain models that come with a black nib. There are other models that come with a, a silver nib. And then to fill the pen, you unscrew like this. Got to be a little bit careful. Um, then inside here, you have that mechanism. And that is what I've said before. That thing here will press against the cartridge, uh, which is why it has that metal cap to protect the back side from being worn down. So you take that thing here out. That here has now the Pilot Con 50 converter in it that comes with it. Has a small ridge thing here that will um, prevent the nib unit from being put in in a way how it's not supposed to be put in, just like that. And then here you have the nib unit. Well, oh, that is actually the nib. It says Pilot. 18k 750 is a gold nib medium and then some small things here that i can't actually read here in the camera uh, so now a disadvantage of the pilot con 50 let's see if i can get it on i can't really get it out right now the pilot con 50 is only like that small here so it does hold very 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 little ink actually there's not a lot ink left yeah a little bit ink is left has three that's the older version of the con 50 that has three small uh, metal balls in here just saw them falling down that helps the uh, ink from not getting stuck at the back side of the converter so um uh, this is a loaner it's not my pen by the way um at the moment i'm using that with the converter but um would i use the pen more often i'd probably just use this cartridge you know because that holds probably two or three times as much ink as that converter and then i'd either buy the cartridges or just refill them with the sirens you know and yeah just use that because it just holds an awful more ink than than that converter so that's that. And uh, then, yeah, as um, I'm not sure if I've said that, but um, filling the pen, the pen is filled from the bottle like that, right? You don't you don't uh, fill the pen one with that thing here inserted, uh, because first of all, you probably yeah you could extend it like that, but it just doesn't really work. So the way you fill the pen is like that, and then you just fill as you fill any other fountain pen, and then to assemble just. Put that thing back in here make sure it sits in like that take that thing and screw everything back together again like this and you are good to go very very lovely pricing of this pen as often with japanese pen is a little bit all over the place i've seen anything from between 160 euro to 210 220 euro if you get them straight from japan you probably get them even a little bit cheaper not exactly sure figure that out depends really on where you are based what your favorite pen dealer is check the pricing out one thing that I have to point out with that pen, and that is something that many people complain about, and I don't really have a problem with it, but I need to be a little bit careful, is the grip. Um, and um, hence the clip positioning. Now, if I hold a fountain pen the way I would normally hold a fountain pen, I have sort of a tripod grip. You see that I have my finger, I keep my finger up here. Now, some people hold a pen like this, probably. I hold a pen like this, and there are many other people that hold a pen like this as well. My finger is up here. Now, if I do the same with the capless or vanishing point, that means I will sort of grip onto the pen, which then, of course, is a little bit uncomfortable. So I need to be a little bit more conscious about my, my grip. And I have to, like, take my index finger and put it here onto the side. That works for me. I can also hold the pen a little bit like that. That also works for me. But 
so it doesn't make the pen unus unusable for me, but I have to be a little bit more all the time when I pick that pen. Um, if I've been writing with other pens for a little while, I have to be a little bit more conscious about the positioning of my fingers when holding the pen. Let's zoom in for a writing sample. Otherwise, there is not much of a problem, but it is something that you should be aware of. So maybe you just take a regular fountain pen that you have, check where how your grip is, how you're grabbing onto the pen, and then be aware of the fact that the capless or vanishing point has a clip just right here in the center. So as said, very, very nice. Just put out the nib writing tip like that. This is a medium. Medium gold nib, this pen writes exceptionally smooth, exceptionally smooth. It is such a pleasure to write with that pen. Pilot Kepler's. The ink here is Diamine Florida Blue. Medium. And um, the ink is, as I said, Diamine Florida Blue. And you see the way I'm holding on to the pen. I touch here a little bit. That is just my natural gri grip because my finger would tend to want to go up here. So, but it's all right for me to write, to write with that. It's a, uh, it's, the pen is on the wetter side. I would say now this is pretty absorbent paper here, which is why it doesn't show them uh, the. The wetness so much. As I said, this here is a loner. I also have our own um, vanishing point or capless. I have the matte black here and that matte black here has a fine nib and I just thought now that I have that loner here with a medium nib and I have our own one with a fine nib, I'm going to do a review about that um, at another point in time probably after I've used it for, for a while. I may demonstrate uh, for you the the line with difference. I've also inked that with uh, Diamond Florida Blue by the way so that we are consistent here. Pilot Kepler's. Medium. Diamine. Florida Blue. So you do see, if you're pondering, should you get a fine or a medium? So you see there definitely is a noticeable difference in between medium and fine. As said, a pleasure to write with, really a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful writer. Um, that's all I can say about the writing experience, really a pleasure. Well, um, I hope that review was useful to you and I'll glad you see you at the next review. Bye bye.